down. <laughs> uh, good morning, folks. Uh, this is the committee meeting, standing committee meeting for economic development, downtown metropolitan planning. Uh, I am the chair, Councillor Khalid Bay. Also, uh, members of the committee that we have on, we have Councillor Pat Hogan. Uh, we have, like only Councillor Pat Hogan, is the only other committee member here. Uh, but on top of Councillor Pat Hogan, we have also President uh, President Hudson. We have Councillor uh, Majok. We have, I don't see any other councillor yet. We have uh, from the mayor's office or from the administration, the deputy mayor, uh, Heather Lamandola. Uh, we also have, I don't know, Frank Kalima, yes, Adrian Fitch, and I'm pretty sure Jake, Jake Deshaw, that's what I figured. Uh, I'll announce any other councilors as they come on as relative to this committee. And so let's get the party started. Who's up first? Uh, we can start with zoning, Heather, if you like. Sure. Good afternoon, counselors. Heather Lamadola, zoning administrator. Um, I have three items. Uh, the first two are special permits. One is at 638 West Genesee Street. This is the old Nick Orso's, and they have been modifying that with new tenants on and off for a few years now. This is the latest tenant, and they want to modify their signage. It's a heavy-duty motor vehicle repair establishment. All right. Uh, Councilor Hogan, yeah, got any questions over there? Uh, no, I don't have any, uh, uh, Councilor. I, I will probably uh, check it out for the uh, study session, but I don't have any questions as of yet. All right, uh, I don't either. So we can move on to the next item. All right, the next item is also a special permit and this is for a, a restaurant and this is in Armory Square. This is um, 219 West Fayette Street to modify the floor plan and the signage. I believe the name of this restaurant is called Slow and so they needed some waivers and um, it has, uh, I'm pretty sure it has the old PJ Dorsey's in it. So there's two restaurants in this building and it goes all the way back from Walton to Fayette. So it stretches the two blocks. And so how the waivers they need is obviously for parking? No, um, you don't need parking oh. downtown. Oh. But, um, they're modifying the floor plan. So they're essentially taking out the banquet room of the other restaurant that was that is still there and they're uh, needed a waiver of their signage. Gotcha. And because it's Armory Square, you look at the um, overall floor area of standing versus sitting as far as um, restaurant establishments go. Right. Uh, any questions? I saw that Councilor Rudge joined us as well. Uh, any questions mm -hmm. from our colleagues on the committee? Uh, any other counselor have any questions? This is going pretty easy, Heather. Last one. <laughs> Wait on the next one. Uh, <laughs> the next one <laughs> is the uh, protected site designation at the Temple Concord at 910 Madison Street. The Preservation Board was the petitioner that brought this forth as a result of the demolition permit, and they recommended this be designated as a protected site. It met um, four of the five criteria. Um, and the Planning Commission concurred with that assessment, and now they have passed this along uh, for your um, review as required in the ordinance. Yeah, I, I know that uh, <clears throat> Councilor Green was uh, having some discussions with them, and I know that Councilor Allen, who I don't believe is on the call, uh, said that she would try to get some follow-up information. Uh, Obviously, I'm going to wait to hear from her primarily. I don't know if any other council have any questions. Councilor, uh, about the, go on, go on, Councilor Rudd. The legal nature, are we, so I attended one of the meetings where this was considered and they initially were considering voting on just the, um, the main synagogue part and not the school and everything. And then they ended up designating the whole thing. 
So is it feasible to even designate just one part of it or is it um, all or nothing? Because I've heard mixed things on this. So as far as um, the real part of it, you're designating a site. So it's a piece of property. And what happens is it becomes an overlay on the zoning map. So you, if you have ever looked at the zoning map, you'll see um, parcels that are outlined in green and they have like little green dots on them. That's a local protected site. So like City Hall, you'll see that as a local protected site. It's the whole property. Now, the Preservation Board can look at their, uh, their report and um, consider some components of the property to be non-contributing. So if this body does designate the property, um, when any proposal comes along, any development proposal, um, it will be through a certificate of appropriateness and they will be able to decipher, um, you know, they will be able to evaluate the project based on what their report said and how they designated it. So uh, there are a couple options here and I have talked to Catherine Ryan about it. You can accept the designation um, as is, you can uh, not accept it. You could remand it back to the preservation board um, and have them reconsider um, some of the pieces of it that they say that they are some some pieces of the property, meaning the buildings, are non-contributing components. So that is an option. Option where we can like say no to the whole thing, but somehow say yes without we have to send it back to them in order for them to say just a part of it. We can't say just a part of it, right? Right, because we we don't draw a line on the zoning map around the building. It's the parcel gets designated. So then you're saying you can't does like well the thing they did initially was not right. Is that true? Was what? There was a meeting where they had a motion to designate just the 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 main part with the college and everything, and not the school. That was like could, a thing. I, so was that, was that sorry. not a proper consideration at the time? So um, I will let Kate Awater speak to that more because she is in staff to that board. However, um, in the resolution, it does talk about the sanctuary. Um, so, but I, I'm going to let Kate speak up now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, so, uh, Kate Awater and the preservation planner. Um, and uh, staff to the Landmark Preservation Board. Um, so, uh, Councilor Rudd, um, when you were at the Landmark Preservation Board's public hearing, um, there, you're correct, the, the, the first motion that was made um, was to um, designate the, pro the property, as Heather is saying, um, but to, uh, to single out the sanctuary specifically as the contributing piece to that designation. Um, that um, uh, motion uh, uh, failed. The, the full board was not behind that motion and, and a, a second motion to designate the entire, uh, the entire complex was put forward um, uh, or to designate the designate the parcel, but have the entire complex be contributing to that designation was the one that was the motion that that got the majority of of the votes, um, and then um, and that was what was uh, then forwarded to the planning commission. Um, so really, this is just, and again, just to sort of repeat what what um, Heather was just saying is that the the boundaries. Um, for this designation would would be the entire parcel, and um, the the question is whether or not it is uh, you know every uh, uh, part of that building complex is considered contributing to that designation. Um, the board, uh, the majority of the board members, um, uh, voted to say yes. The entire complex should be included as contributing to that designation, and as I said, that was that was forwarded on, um, and that's what is before you now. Councilor Bay, um, 
myself and uh, I believe Council Major, I'm not sure if Councilor Rudd, there was a tour of this facility, and I would urge anybody uh, to take that tour. Uh, my understanding is there's a developer interested in the property, uh, and I think he has a, a, a sort of an agreement with the congregation uh, that would a, that would preserve the sanctuary. Uh, have you heard, any of you heard of that, Kate, at all? Um, yeah, well, this is um, the, um, so the, the Landmark Preservation Board has seen some preliminary plans for that uh, development that would um, in large part protect the sanctuary. Um, and, uh, and that is, uh, you know, when, when Councillor Allen, for example, I, I understand she may have a, a meeting later on this week. Um, she will probably hear that from the congregation as well as the developer um, that and certainly that that was the argument that they were making uh, to the preservation board and also at the planning commission that uh, yes the sanctuary was um, and everyone agrees the sanctuary is the most significant uh, piece of this um, uh, property um, and that uh, that is what they were arguing for. It's just the preservation of the of the sanctuary piece. Yes. You know, as this is part of the economic development uh, meeting, uh, uh, that Temple of Concord, of course, is a not, you know, obviously a you know, house of worship, but was a nonprofit entity, I believe. And the developer, of course, would redevelop it and be for, you know, obviously taxable. And uh, just having a little experience up at our uh, when I, I remember St. Patrick's Parish, when we uh, fortunately we didn't have the Landmark Preservation Board involved in it, but when we sold the school building and it became um, uh, a tax paying entity uh, apartment building, uh, you know, and obviously improved our tax base up on Tipperary Hill in the city and at large. So just want to mention that. Just, just so I'm clear, Kate, if, if I'm hearing it right, because I didn't hear all the details of the situation, so it, it sounds to me like the church is selling it under the uh, agreement that the uh, integrity of the building is kept by the developer, and so is that the reason why they want to designate and the developer agree? Um, the, uh, so I, I can't speak to any type of formal agreement that the... That, that the owners of the congregation have with the developer. Um, what I can uh, what I can tell you is the, the the testimony that I've that I heard at the Landmark Preservation Board as well as at the Common Council. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Planning Commission. Um, that that would that is the stated intent of the developer um, to protect the sanctuary. Um, but um, and that they did not they did not disagree with the designation of the sanctuary and that I would like to state as well is that there was no no one was um, arguing arguing against the designation of of the the sanctuary portion um, the, the 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 issue um, or the question. Um, and again, the recommendation of the Landmark Preservation Board is for the entire complex to be under that um, design review that would come with a, a, you know, the complete designation of the property. Okay, did they give you any kind of reasons why they would consider the rest of that building, which is not, you know, not being a, I am a historian, I think, but I'm not uh, versed in what is ever, uh, as far as the architecture goes regarding that. I mean, it doesn't look like anything out of, it was built maybe in the 1950s and 60s. It doesn't look like it's historic in nature at all to me. I don't know. Well, the, 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 it was built in three phases. Um, you have the 1911 portion, which um, is the, 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 the temple piece, if you will. The sanctuary. Um, the, the sanctuary, as well as uh, the uh, a portion of the original school building, which in the 1920s 
um, the school or education wing was expanded um, into the social hall. So if you, if you went into it, you'll see in the 19, there's the 1920s social hall, and that contains part of the original um, development. And then um, in the 1960s, um, there was, a, again, because of this, this growing congregation and the active, uh, active congregation, they needed to expand again. And they built on, on the rear of the property, 1960s um, education and administration wing. All right. And let, me, let, me, let me ask this in the interest of time, because our time is running. Um, for my colleagues that's on the committee, are, are you OK with uh, passing this on committee? Um, now, I understand, as, as Kate mentioned, uh, Councilor Allen uh, will be talking about it as much on her committee as well. Uh, are, are is everybody comfortable with passing it from this committee uh, with what you have now? Uh, Councilor, I, I am comfortable passing it. I believe it should be talked about by the whole, you know, I, I would wait for, I'm very interested in what Councilor Allen would say about this. I think maybe the whole council should discuss this matter. Uh, Councilor Rudd. Um, I'm fine with it going to the whole council. I don't know that I'm Supportive. I don't know how it can all be designated historic, but that's for the whole council, I think, to talk about. And I believe we're only three on here that's on this committee. I believe Kearney is still. I'm here. I finally got it working. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that you, you heard, Kearney, uh, Councilman Kearney. Are you okay with that pass in this committee? Yeah. Yeah. I think it deserves to be voted on and discussed further amongst the whole council. So, yeah, I'm fine with it going forward. All right, so uh, I'll move that forward. I'll see the discussion with uh, Councilor Adams' neighborhood committee, uh, Kate. And, uh, uh, if you would, Heather, the other two items, um, as I know that uh, Councilor Rudd and uh, I think Councilor Connie might have missed both of those. If you could, in short order, just reiterate those. Sure. The first one is a special permit for heavy duty motor vehicle repair. This is the old Nick Orso's on West Genesee Street, and they are modifying their signage. And the second one is also a special permit, but it's for a restaurant in Armory Square. This is at 219 West Fayette Street, and this is uh, in the same building, I believe, as where TJ Dorsey's was, where it goes back to Walton Street. So they're just taking on a banquet space and inserting another restaurant, and they modified their floor plan and signage. Uh, Carney or or Councilor Rod, any concerns there, or are you good with those moving forward? I'm good. Yeah, I'm fine with it moving forward. Uh, Hogan, you as well, right, Councilor Hogan? Yeah. Yes, yes, Councilor Bay. Okay, thanks, Heather. So we're moving all those forward. Anybody uh, else have any items? Uh, does Jake show up from permits or does I don't know, Adrian? Any, any you guys have any items? Any other uh, department? Uh, nothing for me today, Counselor. All right, uh, Eric Ennis. I'm assuming you don't have anything. You haven't said anything, so. Uh, uh, no, just just on the call, but no no legislation to discuss. All right. Well, that was nice, quick, and efficient. Uh, hey, Kate. Uh, my apologies for not seeing that you were on earlier as well. Um, uh, that's quite right. <laughs> uh, so if there is no shout out for me this morning, no shout out for me, President Pro Tem. Oh, 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 is that who's that? Who is I don't that? hardly recognize <laughs> you. Is that Low? Or, hey, uh, how you doing, uh, Greg Low? Shout I'm out. doing great, my friend. I just wanted to raise you and say good morning. <laughs> good morning. Uh, I, nice I don't, to see you, sir. Likewise. I'm not sure if we're continuing. Uh, Jim Conroy, are we continuing on the same feed for the uh, finance committee at 12? Yes, we are. Um, just I'll, I'll hit pause until um, for 10 minutes and then we'll go from there. But yeah, same link. Stay right, right here. Uh, appreciate it, everybody. And uh, Councilor Rudd, we'll see you at 12 in 10 minutes. Yep. All right, please adjourn. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I was just saying, I said, I asked uh, uh, Barry Vossler for the uh, dates of when uh, the sales tax is paid to the city. I sent it to all the councilors. And she gave also gave me an up, update. They gave us an update on um, uh, the last uh, payment we received, which is pre-COVID. So, for our information. Right. 
Well, the uh, the national whatever numbers came out this morning that were like 8.7% down from March, but you would expect that March was only kind of half interrupted. Right, exactly. Officially, and that it was probably worse in New York than anywhere else. There's probably places where it didn't get interrupted as much or it got interrupted later. So I still think like a 30% decline is probably totally possible, likely. Uh, the last payment we received was April 2nd, an amount of $16 million, um, which represented retail. Yeah, you're right. So that's probably about two weeks of, of, of that quarter somewhat affected. But there might even be a delay. That might have been, I don't know yeah, what right. the payment's for. Um, anyway, with that, we can start the committee meeting. Uh, ooh, let me look. We got Councillor Hogan, Councillor Triscoll, Councillor Allen, Councillor Bay, Councillor Green, um, Councillor, maybe Councillor Majok in the background. Um, anyways, with that, I know we had a, a law item. I would, if Kristen or anybody for Kristen is on. Uh, this is Mary Diagostino. Can you hear me? Yep. I'm sure. here for Kristen. I'm kind of pinch hitting for her. I believe it's regarding the tech invoices. Yep. Um, so she had sent the, the letter, and I just asked. I don't know how there's too many screens on my computer. Um, I just, so it was going from, it's the printing for for like supporting documents for appeal and it went from 12,000 to 27,000 so I had just asked if she had actual numbers for the volume and if there were any kind of rate rate change in the printing so I don't know if you have any of that info, but um so no there wasn't anything in terms of the rate change um, I'll say that the appellate company that we're using does give us a 30% discount um, just by virtue of the fact that we're a municipality. Um, the number itself, the increase, is a little difficult to control because we don't know how many appeals we're going to be defending in a year. Um, but this was a substantial increase in large part because of the Alonzo Grant appeal. Um, I, I believe that appeal in and of itself was about $10,000, and that was a product of the size of the brief as well as the size of the record. Okay. Um, any questions for this item from other counselors? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. I'm fine moving it forward. Um, can we just, the members of the committee, Councillor Bay, are you okay with it moving forward? Yes. Um, who am I left with? Carney? Me. Carney and Owen. Carney Hogan. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay. All right. That's fine. Moving forward. I would, any detail you can provide on the um, volume, whether it's like grant versus other things, because just going from 12 to 27 seems like a lot, but that would be helpful for the general meeting when we have it before everybody. Yeah, I'll say that I've been in and out of appeals for a couple of years now, and this is probably the biggest increase. And from my perspective, it is just because of that particular appeal and the size of it. But I'll see if I can get some more firm numbers for you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mary. What are there, Dave Clifford, do you have any items coming forward? Um, I don't believe I do this time around. Okay. Dave Del Vecchio, Dave Proak, anybody else? Uh, Councillor Red, we have one from the uh, API office um, for a tool, a project management tool um, that we have been piloting. Um, the Syracuse University, the, the teams that we're working with there use the same tool to do project management. Um, and so it's useful for us to be able to um, use the same tool just so that we can collaborate that much better. It's uh, called JIRA. It's a well-known uh, project management tool within the industry. 
Um, and uh, the full cost eighteen hundred dollars would give licenses to our office to our office and would be reimbursed by the grant. The Bloomberg grant, sorry. Oh, it would be reimbursed, man. Okay. Any questions for Sam? No, sir. It just seems that the licensing gig is a pretty good gig to be in and with technology as far as selling licenses go. Just a comment. Yeah, the, this is called the concept called software as a service, which frees us up from having to maintain things um, and, and having a server that makes it work. We, we could do that, although it would be much more expensive and it would be more um, intensive on staff here. So yes, licensing can get a little bit complicated and it is a good gig, but for now it, it's been uh, workable for us um, so far. Thanks, Sam. All right, so is everybody out yeah. there, are you good with this item moving forward? Yes. Uh, Councilor Hogan? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yep. So that's all set. Any other items to discuss? Councilor Rudd, this is Evan. Those are the only two items submitted for the next agenda. Okay, sounds good. So all the other items that come after this, we'll just move them to the next standing finance meeting. I know, sometimes they pour in, I'm just not pour in, but. Holding the line, <laughs> holding the line. I say, we're working on it, Kepler, every day, day at a time. Thank you, Evan, appreciate it. Why don't you say come to committee? You can take as many days as you want. <laughs> all right, thank you, everybody. We'll all be holding our breath to see how much sales tax actually goes down. <laughs> hey, just a clarification. Councilor, thank you about setting up a betting pool if anyone wants to participate. Oh, sweet. <laughs> hey, I'll, uh, take overs. I'll take overs. Whatever whatever the final bet is, plus $1, like Price is Right. Oh. All right, Councilor Driscoll. I know illegal. All right, no illegal activity on the live stream. All right. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. See you later if you go to the later meeting. Okay, thank you. Right. Bye. Uh, just to let everyone know, next meeting is at uh, 1.30, DPW. Hey, Jim, what meeting is that? So there's a, the parks is at 1 and Public Works is at 1.30. However, the parks was canceled. Um, okay. Amanda, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so so public public works at 1 o'clock, but the, the Public Works is at 1.30. And I believe uh, Commissioner Awald wants to present some information. Uh, and you're right, the, the parks was canceled. You're right. Right. So 130 Public Works and uh, Commissioner of Water uh, has something concerning the water rates. Uh, Jim, if you would, can you rinse, resend that link, that link for our GPW? Yeah. All right, thanks.